in the newest episode of Nitro Nights, we take a look at the big history of Gran Turismo and obviously the newest release that will be Gran Turismo 7. Also, we got guests in our big studio with Valerio Gallo, the current reigning champion of Gran Turismo Sport and LPN05 giving us their opinion on the new title. Welcome back to Overtake Deutsche G and another episode of Nitro Nights. My name is Renee, and in this show today, we're talking about a franchise that has its 25th year anniversary. If you couldn't tell by my shirt yet what it is, we're obviously talking about Gran Turismo. 25 years of Gran Turismo, that's a long time and a lot to look at. To ensure that you're not just hearing my voice, we've got great guests in the studio once again. We will be joined by Lukas Bracht, also known as LPN05 from the big YouTube world, as well as Valerio Gallo, who's the current reigning GT Sport champion. We also got someone calling in, which is just Devon, talking to us about everything that concerns Gran Turismo world. Also, as you know, we're now looking towards Gran Turismo 7 release, which is just in a few weeks, but it's not the only topic we will touch today, as we'll also have a look at all the previous Gran Turismo titles that have been on PlayStation 1 up to now, the PlayStation 5 generation. But first of all, let's look how it all started. Gran Turismo is the biggest franchise in PlayStation history. Ever since its inception in 1997, the series has stood for exciting racing and a dedicated community. When gaming fans around the globe got their hands on Gran Turismo 1, they were treated with a racing title that set the tone for years to come. 180 cars and graphics that were up to par with the best of the best. GT1 was originally supposed to be called Test Drive. That obviously clashed with the name of a franchise already in existence, hence the birth of Gran Turismo. The sheer volume of content was a surprise, and the fun it brought the community led to amazing numbers of sales. As of today, nearly 11 million copies have shipped all over the world. This game marked the beginning of a legacy that sparked over 15 different versions of the title over the years. All iterations of the games have sold over 40 million, which is hugely impressive considering the series is exclusive to PlayStation. Gran Turismo 1 had an undoubtedly great impact on the success of racing games. Most franchises that set their sights on realistic track racing owe at least part of their history to Gran Turismo. With GT1, the series had the ideal kickstart and they made it stick. Man, that really brings back memories. I had to play Gran Turismo on PlayStation 1 at a friend's house because I didn't even have a console back then. But obviously, that meant I was a lot at his place to play. Uh, actually, now I got my guests at the couch. That's really, really good. So thanks, Lucas and Valerio, for coming by. Uh, I hope you guys had a safe travel all right. Yeah, definitely. Flawless, <laughs> <laughs> as always. What about you, Lucas? Yeah, it was fine with the Deutsche Bahn, like always. No delay, <laughs> nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> we're laughing. You don't know that, but we're <laughs> laughing because I had a four-hour delay yesterday, and he knows that because he was taking the same train today. But we all managed. That's good. Let's talk about the actual topic today, which is Gran Turismo. Uh, you saw in the video, Gran Turismo 1, that's obviously far, far away now. You're not that old yet, Valeria, right? You're 21. <laughs> so you probably didn't play it the first one, right? Well, I was three years old when I played it, but I don't remember anything about it, <laughs> obviously. Must have been good, because you're still around. Yeah, I mean, why why not try it in the future again? So, <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Lucas? When did you start? Yeah, uh, I started with Grand Turismo 4, so I missed out the first three chapters of the game. But all of my community members said I should check it out uh, um, after that because one uh, one to three should be the best in comparison to the rest of them. So I have to take a look back at them. And get a PS1 or a PS2 for that, or an emulator. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, they, they absolutely cool. Yeah. Yes. The only thing is nowadays, you have to get used to all the pixelated corners in front of you, <laughs> like, because they, they are far away, right? And you can't uh, easily spot them like you would do nowadays. Uh, but when, when it comes to Gran Turismo, it, it's not just that it starts racing journey for many of us, right? The actual racing driving is also starts the love for automotive content, right? And for cars in general, we heard that in the videos, there have been so many cars, even in the first Gran Turismo. Did you guys ever like bought a car or love a car in your life because of seeing it in Gran Turismo? Well, uh, for me, I mean, uh, Gran Turismo has always, it's always been like a, uh, a book, you know? Uh, you start from the first page and you always learn from this game. So, yeah, I started when I was a child that obviously uh, I couldn't learn about the cars, but in the, let's say, uh, in the past I've been learning about the cars. I've been recognizing also on the streets every <laughs> model of cars 
that was parked near my house, for example. And yeah, for me, it's like um, it's like a book because it's not all about racing. Valero running through Italy, being like, "That's twenty thousand credits." <laughs> 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 yeah, basically. <laughs> Lucas, what about you? Yeah, for me, it uh, really started a lot for Japanese cars because Gran Turismo, especially Gran Turismo 4, was uh, like 700 cars around. It's so many different Japanese cars. And uh, yeah, I think that's the reason I bought myself uh, last year a Subaru, uh, Subaru WRX. And uh, yeah, I, th I think the whole Japanese car culture Gran Turismo um, taught, me, yeah, taught me about. Oh, that's good. So yeah. I'm at least not on my own. Yeah, yeah. I, got, I got the JDM love, obviously, from Gran Turismo. And I even owned one of the cars that we had in the video, the R33 GTR V-Spec in white that we saw there. I had one many, many years ago by now, but we heard it already. Three, four, five-ish, the games, Gran Turismo, that's where it all started for Lucas and many out there. So let's check them out as well. After a great start to the franchise, Gran Turismo grew to be the name it is today. In the golden age of console gaming around the 2000s, most of the numbered titles were released. These mark the cornerstones of the franchise. Gran Turismo 3 and 4 brought the series to a new console, the PlayStation 2. The graphics and gameplay improved even further, and later, features like detail tuning and endurance racing were introduced. They quickly became a staple of the Gran Turismo series, which you could argue was on its way to become a sim. A new way to play the game was also introduced. A-Spec was the name for classic racing as you knew it from the previous titles, while the B-Spec mechanic was added. It allowed players to act as crew chief and take over the instructions for a car remotely, so you didn't even have to drive yourself to earn some shiny trophies. Gran Turismo 4 famously had more versions than any other game in the series, featuring a prologue in 2004 and an extended version called Gran Turismo 4 Online a year after release. Instead of completely preceding GT4, Polyphony was testing out the online features for the generations to come. Over the following 15 years, the GT franchise only saw two more numbered games, culminating in the most recent release of GT Sport. Ever since the days of testing online features on PS2, the series has also become a worldwide esports phenomenon. It now acts as a platform for an officially FIA-regulated racing series and has also made an appearance at the Virtual Olympic Games. Who would have thought that this franchise would end up here? more cars, more content in general, and even the first online features. That's what we got from the start of PlayStation 2 and the new Gran Turismo titles back then. Guys, what pulled you into the series? Like, why did you end up trying Gran Turismo at that point? Well, for myself, I mean, it was my dad uh, transforming me this passion, this, uh, this love for the game, even though I was little, but yeah, I've grown with Gran Turismo like all the time, and especially, uh, in Gran Turismo 5 is where I started competing for myself and yeah, it's been a long journey uh, since then and uh, yeah, I, I won't regret this, this, this decision uh, because uh, for me, you know, it has, has started to be a very significant uh, also for my career and I hope so for the future and uh, I hope to also keep racing and and also be able to um, have more occasions and uh, yeah. Lucas, you're more, uh, let's say, the car collector, less the uh, competitor yeah, yeah. in terms of driving. So what got you to start Gran Turismo? Was it just the, the pure amount of cars? The funny thing, it was a coincidence that I started with Gran Turismo because back then I got the PlayStation 2 to Christmas and it was in a bundle with the <laughs> game. And it, it didn't even, even know uh, Gran Turismo before. and was just blown away by the whole, uh, by 700 cars, all the tracks, driving uh, the Nürburgring Nordschleife the first time in a video game and stuff like that. And... So I kept going, kept playing, and um, bought the next games as well, like Gran Turismo 5, 6, and on PS3. Uh, and also Gran Turismo Sport, um, which is for me, uh, till now, the best console racer you could get, like with the ranking system and everything. Like if I'm playing different games, like for the motorsport and stuff like that, just crashing all over the place. And with Gran Turismo, you can have fair races. So uh, yeah, that's why. I'm really looking forward to the next Gran Turismo installment because it has single player and multiplayer in, in, a, in a perfect mix. 
Yeah, definitely. It's, yeah. it's what many people miss kind of with GT Sport, right? But let, yeah. let's go back to three, four, and five once again. So what was your favorite moment? Was it when you finally got all the goals in the license test, if you ever got all of them? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, tr I tried my best because when it was in four, I had some really, really hard license <laughs> yes. tests. Like, I remember the one with the safety car on the notch level where you have to follow it and don't... Uh, don't overtake leave, don't, it. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't leave the track, don't overtake it and stuff like that. And back then I was 10, so I didn't understand. <laughs> it. I didn't have to overtake it. It just was too hard. And uh, back then I had always drove the endurance races, like when you have those six or even 24-hour real-time races on the console. <laughs> um, was the time when my um, mom took away my PlayStation <laughs> because I was playing the endurance racing or learning for school <laughs> because I had no time. <laughs> If you always wander out there, yeah. how do you end up with YouTube instead of being at the university or whatsoever? There we go. <laughs> Endurance racing, Endurance racing for, yeah. on Gran Turismo. <laughs> Valeria, what's your favorite moment from back in the days? Um, I think from uh, Gran Turismo 5, uh, for me, it's been, it's, it still is like my most favorite game because, you know, it's the first game having the multiplayer mode. So it's the first time where I met the community, the guys the friends and all the people I met. But yeah, I mean, I can agree with what he said because actually in Gran Turismo 4, uh, with the endurance races, you couldn't, you know, um, yeah, you couldn't pose those endurances while in Gran Turismo 5 with the spec 2.0, it was introduced, uh, this function. And yeah, I mean, for myself, I think the most favorite moment of Gran Turismo 5 probably is, uh, you know, um, going into the online uh, lobbies and, uh, like, I have this thing of myself that I always try to um, join drag racing lobbies because I really love uh, doing drag racing but also drifting. And that's probably one thing that uh, I really love about that game. I mean, that's definitely a unique point of Gran Turismo in general. And I'm absolutely sure that the license tests from back that are actually the reason why I got gray hair that soon. Uh, <laughs> absolutely loved them, but they frustrated me so much sometimes. <laughs> uh, before I ask you guys uh, what uh, it make, really makes Gran Turismo special to you, we also talked to just Devon about that and why uh, he has that love for Gran Turismo. Well, to me, Polyphony doesn't really seem to take inspiration from elsewhere. They sort of just do their own thing. And it seems that they just do things because they want to, not because they're trying to imitate what any other games are doing. I mean, without Gran Turismo, would Forza even exist? And without GT Sports, I'm not so sure Forza Motorsport would be getting the reboot that it seems to be getting with the next one. So it's not just that Gran Turismo games are excellent in their own right is that what they do seems to reverberate throughout the genre and well you know that creates competition and really that is in theory good for everyone not copying others creating competition what else is so special about this this brick franchise i mean it's around for ages we're talking 25 years of gran turismo this year well i mean like i said before i if i if I'm um, able to uh, recognize you know, the cars I see around, it's because there's a lot more um, behind the racing. There's also the uh, knowledge about the motorsport and also about the drivers. And, you know, uh, I think Gran Turismo in the end, uh, it's uh, like an um, encyclopedia, let's say. Uh, it's a book and... Um, and you can always get so fashioned by the cars you see. And uh, it's also a game that really um, educates you in this way, but also in the, uh, in the driving style, because it's something that I also learned for myself in the Gran Turismo Championships. And uh, it's something that obviously uh, starts from the license test, but then it became also even um, something even more serious. So, yeah. It, definitely right. We learn about cars in Gran Turismo. Without Gran Turismo, we'd have never known what's the, what's the uh, Avanzato RTRXX. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the Demio, obviously, yeah. right? All the cars in the Sunday Fun Cup that you were able to drive and, and play around with. We saw in the video there was a Honda Prelude even in there, right? Like Gran Turismo gave you the entire world of, of automotive cars, especially from Japan, who had like million of special <laughs> models and editions, I think. 
At one point, there was like, what, 28 different versions of the uh, RX-7 yeah. FD3S in Gran Turismo. <laughs> so what makes it special for you, Lucas? Yeah, for me, like you said, it's mostly um, the way the game presents car culture. Because in most games, you just get a car, here's a car, no info, history whatsoever, everything you have to search on Google or Wikipedia. And in Gran Turismo, they tell you to, um, something about the uh, brand behind the car and how it went um, through the different stages and stuff like that. And you just get daily drivers, like you said, like normal cars. That's what I really like about the career mode of the game. So you don't start in a Ferrari or Lamborghini, just start with a normal car and have to work, uh, work your way up, which is more rewarding for me. Like if you have any, any car and every, any money you have, don't have a real progression in the game. And um, that's, I think, what makes Gran Turismo special for me. The whole progression system, like, you have to do something, and you see yourself rewarded with that. And, um, yeah, so that's with license tests, you get better in driving. So it's really good for uh, beginners to get into, because the first license test, we must be honest, is just breaking and driving a corner. <laughs> it's not really hard. So, uh, yeah, it's a mix of car culture and progression. It's not really hard. Yeah, it's the, the, the first Easy. breaking tests aren't hard. Come on. Oh, I, <laughs> you always drive that to the first breaking test, and you're like, that's so easy, yeah. right? You just have to keep the car right in there and stop it in the in the field. It never works on the first drive. You underestimate the brakes of the yes. Matsu Premio. <laughs> yeah. so, I remember it's the Daihatsu Kuore, yeah. TRXX Avanzato R. Look that up, by the way. I thought about <laughs> buying one in Japan. <laughs> They're really cool, just because of Gran Turismo. Uh, so no, it's it's more realistic, let's say, in terms of progression, which is what I really love. We know uh, a different title, obviously, where you get uh, a lot of supercars yeah, thrown at meant. you, <laughs> right? And you never get to appreciate the, the slow cars that are around. And uh, there's a lot on, you can do with them in Gran Turismo. But we talked a lot now about the history of Gran Turismo and the previous games, but there's also a new game coming in just a few weeks with Gran Turismo 7. So it's time to look into the future. No history can match the future. Gran Turismo 7 is on the verge of being released. March the 4th marks the kickoff for the first Gran Turismo in over six years and the first numbered installment in the series since 2013. Fans can't wait to see what the franchise has to offer in 2022. In the most recent state of play, Polyphony showed off what video games have grown into with picture-perfect graphics and beautiful racing venues. A heavy emphasis on returning to the glory days of racing games is set to make new and old fans alike dive into the newest GT journey. Be it the extensive fine-tuning of fan-favorite cars or having a high-octane battle on classic tracks like Trial Mountain, die-hard Gran Turismo fans will love it every step of the way. But what's most exciting is seeing this franchise still alive after 25 years of success, starting on gaming systems way back when only the best series in gaming managed to stay relevant. GT turned their head start into a dynasty that now comes in 4K and with 400 different cars. All the rich history this series has produced has been packed into this game, and the expectations reflect this. Living up to them is certainly no easy feat for Polyphony and Sony, but if they manage to pull it off, the Gran Turismo series still has a very bright future ahead. Yep, GT7 is just around the corner. It should be the release. Let's be honest here, the release <laughs> for the PlayStation 5. Everyone was waiting for that. Uh, what are you guys looking most forward to in, in GT7? What, what, you saw a few videos already, like, yes, as we all yeah, did, yeah, right? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. It was the only reason I bought a PS5 <laughs> back then. Um, yeah, mostly to have a finally a good single player Gran Turismo again. Like, GT Sport had single player added afterwards. But uh, since Gran Turismo 6, it's, it's some years since then, and a one uh, console generation between. Um, so I'm really looking forward to have a normal single player Gran Turismo experience, like we saw in the trailers, uh, starting with a really crappy car with no money at all. <laughs> so that's <laughs> awesome. Um, and it looks just like uh, Gran Turismo 4, like with the map and everything. And Gran Turismo 4 is my favorite title, so I'm really, really looking forward to that. Um, and like I said, I all, uh, also had fun with GT Sport because the multiplayer really worked well. And now they're adding the multiplayer into the single player experience. It's just for me the perfect mix. So I'm really, really looking forward to this game. I also just bought the PlayStation 5 due to Gran Turismo. Then I bought a second rig due to Gran Turismo <laughs> PlayStation 5 and a second wheel due to Gran Turismo <laughs> PlayStation 5. So a lot of things yeah. that you would need to uh, compete, right? Which is more your style, I would say, looking forward to GT7. <laughs> <laughs> Could it be that you might want another world championship? Maybe. <laughs> well, uh, let's see first. Um, but yeah, what the, um, what I expect uh, exactly from GT7 is firstly, yeah, 
I mean, I returned to the past and, uh, you know, I uh, focus on the single player campaign, which is obviously what we missed in Gran Turismo Sport, which is a much more competitive game. And yeah, I would like to see a fusion because in the end, even though there was only competition in GT Sport, but it was also fun. Uh, we had so many great racing and probably with the fusion with the classic Gran Turismo, um, meeting up with the other guys and, you know, I think it could be the definite Gran Turismo, I would say. So, yeah, really looking forward, forward to that and, yeah, I really hope we, we can enjoy it all together and, and yeah, so... Yeah, but bringing it all together and, and hanging out with friends at the Grand Turismo Cafe, that would be cool, yeah. by the way, in VR, I kind of imagine. Yeah. Uh, but it sounds like a lot of potential for the new Grand Turismo 7. Uh, so we obviously had to ask Just Devin about what he sees uh, in GT7, what could happen there? Well, first and foremost, from a YouTube perspective, it's going to end the droughts of good racing games. It's been a long time since there has been a game coming out that is like really really good for youtube content and grand Turismo 7 seems like it'll probably be that game um, and hopefully you know we get forza motorsports in the not too distant future as well hopefully at the end of the year so it could be a good time for racing games um, and it's been you know a long time since there's been a game that has had potential for single player and multiplayer uh, longevity um, and I think this could be the type of game that has something for every type of interest. So, yeah, there's a lot of things to look forward to with this game. And I'm really, really hoping that uh, Polyphony is the nail on the head. We all celebrate that so much is coming back into Gran Turismo 7 that we had on previous games. But is there anything already that you guys miss currently, either from the previous games or from other uh, racing titles out there that you think might not be in? Um, well, I think, uh, firstly, yeah, uh, customizing the cars because uh, as we were using Gran Turismo to drive mostly stock cars, um, so aesthetically you, cannot, you couldn't modify the cars. And for sure in Gran Turismo 7 it's going to be a huge step forward, uh, so we can have our, uh, our own way to um, express, um, let's say, our love for cars, you know? So. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I, 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 I that's so good. Lucas, Lucas in the background, like, if yeah, yeah. I just ignore Renee, then everything will be fine. <laughs> I think you if wanted to say more, so no. No, no, no. don't want to do it. You're interrupt. on. You're on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But one thing I'm missing at the moment, uh, or they didn't announce it, uh, like we said before, endurance races, like I didn't hear, hear anything about it, or A spec or B spec models, like oh, back true. then. Yeah. Yeah. But, that would be a big opportunity for the multi multiplayer as well to have driver changes with real drivers. So a real endurance races in Gran Turismo would, would be, in my case, a real game changer. Like other games do it, like iRacing and stuff like that. And Gran Turismo did it before, just with the AI, so it could be possible to implement such, such a system. There was another one. You probably saw it in the trailer, right? There was this video in the state of play where they showed us rain and the new yeah. weather system, which is, which is amazing. I yeah. love it, right? That you get this uh, uh, radar where you see how the clouds move. But did anyone notice that even in rain, they all took the same line? So my biggest question always, like seeing this state of play is, we got weather now, we got drying line and everything, it seems at least from the video, but do we get rubber in tracks where the rubber line is more slippery when it's wet? Because I guess it was AI driving in that trailer. Yeah, they all drove so. the same line. Do you guys think that could be the first? Because that would be a world's first. There is no game out there right now that does that. No sim, uh, sim racing title whatsoever has rubber on the line, and when it gets wet, it's more slippery. Yep. Do you think that could be something in, yeah. in Gran Turismo? I, I think they would have shown in the gameplay <laughs> if they had th this feature in, because they showed the, the whole rain and weather effects like in like 10 minutes of ah, gameplay true. and didn't show like the rubber line or stuff like that. But if, you, if you're driving in rain, like you said, you have a different racing line to choose. Otherwise, you just, you just slip off the track. Well, Maybe it's yeah. a DLC and they will call it slippery when wet. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, no worries. Um, actually... I noticed that, for example, there's the um, introduction of uh, uh, wet pedals on the track. So when it rains, um, the wet pedals on the side of the track, they, they stay. And it's something that, uh, for example, in the old Gran Turismo, it wasn't like that. You, you just had, for example, the dry racing line 
uh, divided by the wet uh, asphalt, and that's the only, let's say, the um, only representation and uh, simulation of the uh, um, uh, wet conditions. Is there any other improvements looking at the, the history of Gran Turismo that you guys would love to see in GD7? Well, for sure, one, one thing that was already shown was uh, Sophie, uh, the new um, artificial intelligence. Ah, true, yeah. And actually, <laughs> I, had a, I had a try on that and it didn't turn out so well. <laughs> no, no okay. I mean, actually, I've been... I've been doing like 30 laps and I was just able to end up two tenths behind the AI, which is something that for Gran Turismo is like apocalyptic. Uh, <laughs> for uh, yeah, first yeah, YouTube yeah, yeah. videos, everyone will be like, Gran Turismo is doomed, can't even make it onto the podium anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like, my, my career is over after this, you know? <laughs> Williams will just hire the AI. Yeah. And let ah, them well. race. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that, that uh, single player will be hard because in Great was a mortal to race. You start at the back and you have to be yeah. at first. And yeah. <laughs> it was it was always like not, not simple, but it was a simple base system. Yeah, like yeah. You start on the back, you try to drive through it, and due to the cars they have, they might be uh, up front. Yeah. And, yeah. and you try to get them. That will definitely change. You're right. Uh, anything else? It's, I'm just wondering. It's like, there, there's just so many features that we could talk about, right? When it comes to G GT7. Uh, I missed the car washing feature. We talked about that already in the background. <laughs> oh, well. So the old Gran Turismo showed you the car and they yeah. washed it. And when you did the oil change, you saw the car and the guy was, by the way, sliding under the car, probably drinking all the oil. I have no clue where yeah, it went yeah. to <laughs> on the animation. <laughs> and then it got back into the engine from underneath. Also no clue how that works. But it was cool because it showed me the car. But now we and have no, the, the white body animation. Now we, no, we got the white body animation, so we don't need that anymore. The definitive <laughs> meme. Yeah, it's just, it's just perfect. <laughs> so that's a trade off. Like, you can't have that animation yeah, anymore because yeah. you've got the What's white body. What's enough work to do that? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we should also talk to just Devin about what he thinks should be improved in the newest title. Well, I can really only speak to Gran Turismo Sports and mostly the multiplayer side of things. But, you know, for one, the penalties, sure, they definitely just have to be turned back on. And hopefully in a more improved system because uh, it was slightly unfair at times. You know, guys would get penalties when they were the victim of a punting. Um, but yeah, that is something that does need to be worked on. And ever since they turned them off, it's just become a disaster. In multiplayer guys are just taking extreme liberties. Um, and I think another thing that sort of goes with that is that I think the driver rating and sportsmanship rating should be separated. Because as it is at the moment, uh, the theory, you know, in theory, most people are going to, you know, drive clean because if they don't, it'll affect their driver rating. But you do get the guys who like the fact that it affects their driver rating because then they force themselves to get a reset and then they can just get some cheap, easy wins in the lower lobbies. And then once they reach their skill cap, they just do it again. So I'd like to see that separated so that they can't exploit it that way. Uh, you know, then they could end up as A plus drivers, but in the dirtiest lobbies ever. And the only way to get out would be to be clean. So hopefully they'd learn lessons that way. Behavior in online lobbies, that I think will forever be a big topic, <laughs> no matter which racing game we're talking yeah. about. And the penalty system. See, you always laugh when he says penalty system. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, for me that I've been racing like, uh, all the um, FIA championships, but also daily races sometimes. You know, uh, probably one of the huge downside about Gran Turismo uh, nowadays was the uh, penalty system because um, actually if you got hit by a car by whatever reason, uh, you would get like five second penalty. And for an injustice like that, I mean, for sure, the penalty system has to be uh, like reworked. Also, for in let's say esports um, uh, sections, because um, it's it's even a more serious situations. And but also for people playing the game just casually, uh, I mean, uh, it could be um, let's say uh, stressing, but also uh, not very um, fun to play uh, sometimes. And yeah, I really feel like that uh, we should still bring the penalty system on because in this way uh, people will be more cleaner on the track and uh, which 
it's not like that, for example, in Gran Turismo and uh, Gran Turismo Sport. Uh, sometimes they had to remove the penalties because they were too much um, injustice. Injust, uh, how to say that? And I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, um, yeah, um, I, will, I really would like to see um, a new system uh, that really can, uh, um, let's say, calculate your um, your touches um, against the cars. So I, I have to say, I, I just think it's it's very very hard to do that, right? We, we know racing. The, the thing here is, it's not like cheating in, in Counter Strike, right? Where you know it's like yes or no. Racing incident, they can look the same in terms of data, but they can be completely different on what actually happened on track, right? So I, I think there will always be a, a big topic uh, to, to talk about. It's like, what about you, Lucas? Do you had a lot of penalties in your life in GD Sports? <laughs> Yeah, mostly, like you said, most of the unfair way because... Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was yeah, never at ne fault. Ne never <laughs> uh, did I question anybody. <laughs> was it... No, no. <laughs> um, yeah, but like you said, it's, most of the time it was really unfair because you wanted to drive fair, wanted to um, better your driver and uh, driver ranking and stuff like that. And because of somebody else, you just got deranked, stuff like that because he crashed into you and the game recognized it as your fault because you drove in his line and stuff like that. Um, like, it needs to be there so to have competitive racing online and have clean racing to, bring, uh, to make people drive clean. Otherwise, like we see in other games like Forza, <laughs> uh, people drive like they want, want to because the game isn't uh, giving any faults for that. Um, but it has to be improved for sure, yeah, to, to, keep the, to keep the fun as well because for new players, they really, really... Get um, get the feel they are unfair. Um, it's unfair for them, and uh, it could kill the fun in in the long term. I think they they'll probably have learned from also the the world tour, right? Like Polyphony had so much more data when it comes to that. They saw so many races themselves, right, on site with the world tour back then. Uh, so I hope I hope that will help in terms of the uh, penalty system. Uh, when we talk about the GT7 release, what is in, in in your words? What's the main selling point why people will go out there now and buy GT7? Because it's a Gran Turismo. <laughs> <laughs> Smart. <laughs> yeah. Easy. <laughs> yeah, like you said, it's, for me, it's a perfect Gran Turismo mix. It's like from all the past Gran Turismos, the best parts are in one game. Like, And it's the best racing game for PS5, so th there isn't so much to choose from at that moment. <laughs> but yeah, I think the yeah, best Gran Turismo you could buy for at the moment, yeah. That yeah, sounds great, and we're obviously all waiting for the release of GT7. Thanks, guys, for joining me today. Really appreciate you taking your time coming here to our Overtake.gg studio, Nitro Nights Action. As uh, I always want to say that, Nitro Nights Action sounds like a US TV, <laughs> uh, sports TV style. I hope we'll see each other again uh, after the release, maybe, uh, to have a chat about... Uh, what happened to the game? Is, is it what we expected or what will come in the near future? So I'm absolutely sure that we will also see a few DLCs, maybe, expansion packs, whatever it is, GD7 will release fairly soon. That's a wrap for this episode of Nitro Night, so make sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and let us know in the comment section down below which is your favorite Gran Turismo title. My name is Rene, and I'll see you guys next time. Not enough racing content just yet? Why not check out a few more videos here on Overtake.gg? For example, our video about Test Drive Unlimited Solar Chrome that's just upcoming in hopefully a few months, or our last time's Nitro Nights episode where it was all about Trackmania and the upcoming tournament.